All right, so I want to take a quick minute and share some thoughts. It's been a minute since I've done a rant. And so rant stands for rambling about the news today. And so inflation is the topic I want to touch on. And it stems from this past weekend in regards to the picture that I showed dealing with, you know, these three books that are in front of me right here. And I want to actually touch on something that uh, I think uh, definitely needs to be touched on. And so I wanted to share my thoughts with you because as I share that picture of the three books that I think were very influential in my further studying of the subject matter in regards to what money is and how it relates to the current environment we're in, unfortunately, a lot of people don't think that same way because they misunderstand the word money and what actually what it means. And I want to just basically sh share some props or whatever real quick and share my two cents and how typical inflation as it starts off usually leads to hyperinflation. But yet in this current environment, I don't think it's going to play out in accordance to way uh, it has in prior years and so history it does rhyme and it leaves clues but i think nowadays given this current digital push and especially on the blockchain it's going to be a lot different to where we're not going to see uh paper just thrown into the streets in the way that we have in prior examples but i want to start off by talking about these books and just share with you some examples here and so each one of these books i have in front of me here as you guys can see it's the money when money dies uh the death of money as well as uh, when money destroys nations they use the word money 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 and unfortunately people who use the word money in this context here are the ones that end up hurting the most and it happens to be the working class and the working class are primarily made up of those that are the savers in society they're the ones that buy into the concept of save now for a late you know and, and it'll it'll grow over time compound interest over time okay cool and so one of the things I want to talk about simply you know, of course, this is just not structured. I want to be quick and precise and get as many thoughts as I can because throughout the weekend, they were coming to me and I just couldn't get it all out. But I'm going to try to lay something out real simple. When money dies, the Weimar Republic, Germany, we all know what happened here. And all of these events, I believe, all started with a trigger or a single event. And of course, World War I and the reparations end up having a lot to do with what led to the complete extreme inflation that led to hyperinflation and all that took place within a 10 year or so time frame and this book here does a great job of telling the story of people ideally the working class those that were savers those who were just going about their everyday lives in society in the european area around this time frame here and so from start to finish 1920s up to 1930 ish give or take trillions and trillions of wealth was confiscated i.e through hyperinflation or what's going to be considered which starts off as stealth theft and then turns into outright confiscation due to the cor corrosion of the monetary policy and currency but here i have with me a couple <laughs> uh deutsche marks and so once again I'm a, I'm a student of history i love to use history as a guide to possibly predict the future and so this book here i'll put the link down below if you guys are interested in reading a free copy of it but it's definitely worthwhile but one event led to the complete confiscation of the entire all, all the savers. And so here I have a, a 50 million or so Deutsche Mark. And then here I have a 100 million Deutsche Mark. Once again, something that people can learn from because money, if people would have known that the, this this is not money, it actually becomes collector's pieces to people 80, 90 years down the line. But yet, of course, money from the standpoint of the way we know it to be in the form of gold and silver, as well as other tangible real assets, if you read this book here, the people who actually had real tangible assets are the ones that benefited the most. And of course, we've seen the pictures of all of these notes in the streets, as well as the actual price of rights marks in denominated in metals terms and how it went straight straight up to the ceiling in similar fashion as to what I believe we're going to expect in the near coming future. But this is just an example of what money is not. So, you know, of course, you guys may know that, but a lot of people who are out there and not awake to what's reality, what's really going on. They're not in tune. So you might want to share this book and read it for yourself if you haven't. Another book here, When Money Destroys Nations. So this book here, Philip Haslam. I've had a chance to have him on my show twice. I'll actually put that link up here if you guys are interested in finding out more about it. But once again, Philip Haslam, talk about Zimbabwe. Another example, an event occurred. Ideally, it was a privatization or nationalization of the, of the farming land there. They kicked out the settlers there. And, of course, from that point on, Mugabe destroyed, destroyed the currency. We all know what happened. And to, to piggyback on that, I have the notes right here in front of me. Why? Because what was considered money actually became collector's pieces for us today. And so, of course, everybody know how this goes. We got a $50 trillion. Then we also have a, what is this? This is a $100 billion note. And then to cap it all off, we got a $100 trillion note. 
a history piece. Once again, people in that time thought it was money, but it was not. It became a tool that the government used to steal the saving power, the purchasing power of all the citizens in Zimbabwe. And of course, if you guys have had not, not had a chance to read this, I'll link it below as well. But it's loaded with stories of real life examples of how people who are unaware and not awake to reality at the current moment as it was unfolding, they became react as opposed to responding beforehand on what it is to actually protect yourself in the case of a hyperinflationary environment. And of course, these bills were scattered throughout the streets. We all know that's how I have them here today in my collection. And then I want to touch on this book here briefly, The Death of Money. So this is a recent book, a book from Jim Rickards. And what's interesting about this book is it summarizes what the entire global experience will be in this current decade, in my opinion. And so here, as you guys can see, all these currencies basically as tombstones in the ground. And of course, most of this is all geared towards the reshuffling of the deck or the rebranding or restructuring of the monetary system. And we all know what that's labeled as, what it's been labeled as, the Great Reset. And of course, over the last year, I've been talking about it in great lengths. But one thing that's different than prior history events, What once again, this event here was a 10-year event. This event here was a 10-year event. This year here is also set to be a 10-year event, and we're, technically speaking, only in year one. And it all has to do with the reshuffling of the deck in regards to how the Federal Reserve note will no longer be the world reserve currency. And so one thing that we can all take away from these three books here is the fact that within the first two, they are historical accounts of what happened and how it happened. And of course, history always leaves clues, and it's up to those to who are curious enough to go in diving and looking for for themselves to pick out nuggets, to pick out things that they can implement in this current environment now to protect themselves. And it always boils down to this. And if this is one thing you take away from this video here, national currencies, i.e. what is labeled as money, end up being your greatest financial liabilities in the end when the economy crumbles, the monetary reset be occurs, and they always roll out some type of new technology or rebranded note. And what's going to be different this time is that because this is a globally synchronized event, and of course, each one of those books prior to World War I, the first one, the uh, event of confiscation of the land for Mugabe back in the early 2000s, and then of course, this one here happened to be the current pandemic that we're all experiencing now is the trigger or the catalyst, the primary catalyst for this current book here. And it says the coming collapse of the international monetary system. And of course, in order to pull something off of this magnitude here, you always need an event. And the pandemic is going to be the event for this here. So looking ahead, what can we take away from this? What's going to be interesting is that uh, I don't think we're going to see dollars in the streets. Where my dollars at? I don't think we're going to see papers flowing around the streets in the capacity that we saw in Zimbabwe, as well as in the Weimar Republic, to where I now have collector's pieces to use as props to educate people and tell people about history. Moving forward with this note here, I believe it's going to be more of a push at some point when the economy corrects even further negatively or downward, we're going to be going negative. And of course, cash, as De Ray Dalio said, is trash, but it still serves a purpose because it spends. Pretty soon, that's going to become a threat. And if we end up going actually to real nominal negative rates, as I've mentioned before, cash will become a threat to people who want to save in something that has already been weaponized. And what I mean by weaponized, over the last year, more or more than a quarter percent of the current monetary base has been brought into existence. If that's not a weapon, I'm not sure what is. So where does this leave us now? What do you think? The blockchain. The blockchain has been put in place to save the day, or has it? And so just recently, over the weekend, uh, the whole Economist cover. And so as you guys can see on the screen here, the Economist cover uh, showing basically that the government, central bank, digital currencies are going to be the chosen method in which the orchestrators of this entire event, what they use to, what they look to use as a tool to implement into the public hands. And so, once again, I've always been a skeptic because the technology, even though it is beneficial if used for the correct purposes, but unfortunately, all things that start off good eventually work its way into the hands of very bad individuals. And typically speaking, in a fallen world such as the one we're living in now, the bad tends to win out, and therefore, what comes further? More monetary enslavement, more debasement, more theft, more everything that is not beneficial for humanity. And of course, there's projects out there in the crypto space, blockchain space, that will serve wonders. But overall, if the orchestrators of this current monetary system collapse happen to have their way, 
they're going to make sure that they are issuing and the sole issuer of whatever that next legal tender will be. And of course, it looks like it's going to be the digital currency, central bank digital currency, to be correct, because it's what has been chosen. And so from the Economist cover in 1988 showing the Phoenix, basically setting us up, letting us know that at some point in the future, there's going to be a coin, the Phoenix burning. Cash is trash. We see the piles of paper burning. And then, of course, in the most recent cover, 30, 30, 33 years later, might I add, is right where we want to be. Government, central, controlled, digital, ledger, technology with the removal of cash. And so while this still serves a purpose in the interim, most definitely within this decade, if all if history proves to be correct, it takes around 10 years or so to completely from start to finish to inflate, to hyperinflate and issue something else. This one here is going to be something in the form of a digital currency. And, if, and in my personal opinion, as I've said before, it's all been a part of the plan. And that's why it's been hard for me to jump on board with the excitement of going solely digital, even though it presents an opportunity that you're winning in the short term. But think about the long term. Think about future generations. And that's where you know, it usually concerns me most. But I just wanted to take a minute, rant a little bit about these books here and how I think if people were interested... If you were bold enough, courageous enough, take the time to share any of these books, if you have them on your bookshelf, with a family or friend, and let them challenge them as to this word right here, money. If they don't understand what money is now, they're going to become victims of these transitions as they occur because they're going to base their entire financial lives on something that does not even belong to them. Legal tender, national currencies are privately held, instituted, instruments of debt contracts between a centrally controlled entity and your national government and so you don't own them you are just being allowed to use them and they collect them back through taxation and inflation so i just want to take a quick minute share my thoughts rant a little bit hopefully i got enough of that out to give you something to chew on and of course there's a lot more to dive into so i'm actually thinking about trying to do some type of extraction and put together like a little webinar type of situation to reach out to more people but what i need you to do is a, share these books if you have them with family and friends. There's going to be some links down below that you, if you want to give them as gifts or whatever, feel free to do so. And then share this video. Just put it in the hands of other people so they can see that at some point, all paper notes, i.e. cash, returns back to its intrinsic value, which is zero. And typically speaking, they end up in my possession here. And I'm the one that collects them as well as others out there and use them as props to share with you guys. So other than that, I'm done ranting. I just had to get that off my chest. It's always good to connect with people who think like me. So leave your comments down below. What did I miss out on? Where and what can I add in if I end up doing some type of uh, uh, webinar or something of that magnitude? Let me know what I should incorporate. I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts in the comment section. And I'll see you tonight for a live talk. Let's talk about it. Peace.